Junie's entire world came crashing down when she walked in on her husband, Finesse, screwing another woman. Yearning to put some space between her and her soon-to-be ex, Junie reconnects with her homegirl, Siren, who convinces her that it's time for a fresh start. But things progress a lot faster than she expects, and before she knows it, she's fallen in the clutches of the handsome and powerful Santana Stax Perez. The king of New York has always been one to get what he wants, and right now, he wants Junie to be his future. Siren is a bad girl with bad intentions, but she might have just met her match in a mysterious man known as Glizzy. When they meet, he offers her the proposal of a lifetime, and since she wants out of the hood, she gladly accepts. But will this arrangement be worth all of the trouble she's put through? And is Glizzy the knight in shining armor she's waited on for years? Find out in the first installment of Captivated by a Brooklyn Boss. Stax, Junie, Siren, and Glizzy are back for an explosive final installment in Captivated by a Brooklyn Boss series. Find out what happens when love and war collide. Will Junie and Siren find their happily ever afters in their new romantic interests, or will they crash and burn before their romance can even begin? Captivated by a Brooklyn Boss 2 is filled with treachery, mind-blowing secrets, and an ending that will leave you swooning for more. Hello, my beautiful people, and welcome back to the Bibliophiles Bookcase. I am your host, Erica the Bibliophile, and we are here to discuss two short stories. Um, this is my first time reading this author, Jay Jones, and this is Captivated by a Brooklyn Boss, Parts 1 and Part 2. They're very short um and this is just my preference when they're this short this really could have been just one short story the second book was not necessary um because okay before we get into the story i'm just going to tell you my little small critiques um the story was good it's just some kinks should have been worked out first because um where the first story left off and then like you have to wait for the part two but luckily like me just finding this book because they were released last year um i read part one and part two back to back but if you would have read the first part and then waited for part two i feel like it could have been a disappointment and i say that only because the part two is just um telling part one from other people's point of view so it's almost you're reading the same story twice so that's not a part two to me um and there's some stuff that we really didn't need but anyway let's jump into the story so we have a woman by the name of junie who right off the bat is cussing and yelling because she just came into her house to find her husband having sex with someone else it's like it's bad enough you cheating on me but then you cheating on me with a white woman and you're doing it unprotected so it's just like get out get the fuck out get out right now i don't want to hear shit just get out and at first it's given very much players club he's like we can talk about it you know calm down do 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 and she's like oh you think i'm playing with you and so she runs into the closet and he know exactly what she's going to get she's going to get her gun and she pulls out her gun and she's like you're gonna get the fuck out of my house and so at first he's a little nervous but then he manages to tackle her ass down to the ground and this is where i get mad because i'm like junie if you gonna pull that bitch pull that bitch like as soon as he came towards you you should have shot a fire in the air or shot past his ear because it's like you're a great shot so use the gun and so he manages to get the gun away from her and while he's got her like bear hugged on the ground she started crying like how could you do this to me da, 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 da. and then because she's so upset she spits in this man's face and that's what causes him to like back back because it's like i know you didn't just do, but she managed to work herself up out of it and get him out of the house and so her husband by the name of finesse is a nobody like he ain't got no job he don't do nothing he just a good for nothing nigga basically and it's like and she knew that before she married the man so i was like why did you marry this nigga but um 
once again, we have a woman thinking that she can change somebody. But she goes running to her friend Siren. And baby, Siren is the definition of with friends like you who needs enemies. But the backstory on Siren is that um, she's a stripper who um, is hoping for a better life. She's one of those women who feels like she's just too pretty and shouldn't be living the rough life that she's living. She drives like this old broke down car and she feels like she should be uh, being chauffeured around and, you know, just living a grand life as a kept woman. Instead, she's a stripper who not only strips, but also uh, basically is a prostitute because she fucks for money on the side as well. So, um she uh what was it she was like sleeping with this man and she knows he's a married man she know the wife because they done called i mean the wife done called her and they done had words with each other and she says something to the husband like you know you need to get your wife under control and he like she ain't gonna do nothing she just gonna work herself up but she ain't going nowhere but hey watch your mouth about my wife and it's like nigga you disrespect your wife so why can't i do it you don't care about her either so you know what does that mean to me you getting puffed up in your chest like hey that's my wife so um and she asked for some money he give her what like a 50 or a hundred dollars like some little chump change and she's offended by that but it's like girl that's your fault She's talking about how much money he got. She know he drive this. She know that he doing it big. And he only giving her that little amount of money. It's like, yeah, girl, because you not his one. He already got a wife. He got kids. He got a family. You just a little side piece. And if you demand money like that, you need to demand it up front before you sleep with him. And But anyway, after he give her the money, I think it was $500. I was like that bad. Um, but she's like, you know, say hi to the wife for me. And he slaps her ass. And it's like, didn't I tell you to stop playing with me? And she's like, damn, I'm sorry. I'm like, you're apologizing to him? Okay, whatever. Um, and so then she went to the corner store. And uh, I, I, I don't think I mentioned this, but if you couldn't tell by the title, this is set in New York. So she goes to the bodega and she's ordering a sandwich or whatever. And the dude behind the counter is her old boyfriend and they still sleep together from time to time. But the reason why they're not together is because she has hopes of one day catching a baller's eye and having somebody take her away from the life that she's living. And she's like, there's no way that he can do that working at a bodega making sandwiches. And so, you know, when he sees her, he's flirting like, you know, what's up? And she's like, um, I want to go on fancy dates and fancy dinners and all that type of shit and you know i can't get that with you and he's like you know one day it just might happen and she's like yeah whatever but um i bring that up to say like while she's about to eat her food this is when she gets the call from junie who's crying and telling her you know this happened and i can't believe i caught him and she's like girl you knew that nigga was a bum from the very beginning i don't understand why you all in your feelings about it He's a nobody. And she's like, yeah, I know. Um, Can I come over? And so Junie goes over to her house, basically to wallow in self-pity. But Siren, like, she really don't care. First of all, she's jealous of Junie because Junie is a woman who has her own money. She has her own nice house, has a nice car, and basically is doing better than her. But, you know, of course, she doesn't let the jealousy jealousy show outright with Junie or Junie just brushes it off as oh that's just Siren and it's like girl what what the fuck you're not catching the clues like what the fuck is going on because Siren slay, say little slick shit and it just I'm like no ain't no way you thought this girl was your friend but I guess she did but Siren tells her you know um I'm gonna hook you up we're gonna change your outfit and we're gonna go out to the club tonight and so they do that, and at first, Juni is acting, like, real stuck up, and it's like, as soon as they walk in the club, somebody invites them to a VIP section, and of course, Siren, because she's thirsty to be in the presence of anybody with money, she jumps at it immediately, 
and is flirting with this guy and then she slips a pill that she got from somebody else from working at the strip club she slips it into Junie's drink talking about that should loosen her up and you know like basically make her have a good time or whatever and Junie like she didn't see her slipping into the champagne so she just drunk the whole thing because she's one trying to get over her nerves of being out as well as still in her feelings about catching her no good husband having sex with somebody else and so at first she's talking to the other guy that's there but you know she's not really feeling him she don't want to talk to him and she goes down to the bar i believe to get some water because it was just like the champagne and whatever that pill was like it hit her like almost instantaneously and so she goes down to the bar just to get some water and i believe one guy yeah one guy tries to push up on her and she's not giving him no play then here comes a completely different guy, you know, that steps in and makes sure nothing happens to her. And he's like, you know, you're going to be my wife. She's like, what? Who the fuck are you? What are you talking about? But he know her name. He's like, I know everything about you. And she walks away from him and goes back to the section. And Siren thinks to herself, like, damn, so much for her being date raped and i was like what? i'm like so that's the pill that you put in your quote unquote friend's drink hoping that something will happen to her and oh i forgot to mention um siren lets us know that she also fucks with finesse from time to time as well and it's like girl what the fuck but anyway she goes out into the car with the guy that she was having sex with and she steals his watch but the guy notices that she steals the watch and he tries to get up on her but somebody intercedes and it's like yo what the fuck is going on just so much is going on so quickly but um that's another way she gets money like when she's having sex with people she'll steal things from them and the reason why her and Junie hadn't been talking for like a while is because she just got out of the hospital from stealing from somebody else, but he caught her and beat her ass to a pulp to where she had to recover. And now she coming back and like, why would you do the same thing all over again, girl? But she's just blinded by money. She wants it any way she can get it. But then it's like, you're also not being responsible with the money that you do manage to get. It's slipping through your fingers. You don't have good money manager skills because if you did then you would be able to have your own bread to spend how you want if you were smart about it what is it you have champagne dreams on a beer budget like it don't make sense but so come to find out because when she when junie had got back to the section she was telling siren about the guy that was down at the bar and she's like, and he comes into the section and she's like, girl, that's him right there. And she's like, who? Um, she's like, that's the guy I was just telling you about. She was like, I know you ain't talking about stacks. That's uh she was like, girl, that man is paid. He got this, 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 and this. And she was like, um, you need to get up on that and leave your husband alone. And she's like, girl, I'm not even thinking about that. I'm actually thinking I might get back with my husband. And it's like, girl what you might do what but okay whatever but anyway um Stax comes in and swoops her up and is basically like i'm gonna make this woman my wife and oh with siren getting away from the guy that uh she stole the watch some guy intercepted and helped her out with that and says now that i've done something for you you now have to do something for me and she's like you know what do you want and i need a green card so i'll give you fifty thousand dollars to marry me and it was like she was smart for all of two seconds and was like no let me get away from you and she hopped in her car and got away and then she talks to junie about it and it was like you know i hopped in my car i got out of there because i didn't know if he was trying to kill me rape me whatever um 
And then Junie and Siren go shopping. This part, I, d- I didn't get. Because I'm like, once again, how are y'all still friends? Because, uh, what was it? Before they even go shopping. Let me take that back. Junie passes out and, like, Sax takes her to his house and lets her basically sleep it off. And it's, that's, I messed that up. I messed that up. Um... Because it wasn't until Junie called Siren and told her what happened. And that's when Siren, like, basically thought to herself, like, damn, so much for her getting date raped. It's like you wanted her to pass out somewhere and for anybody just to take advantage of her because you're jealous of what she has and how her life is going compared to yours. But this is your friend. That's what it was. I messed that all up. My bad. Um, And so then this is Junie banging on her door. And it's like, bitch, how the fuck you leave me to fiend for myself? And she's like, girl, it ain't my fault you got drunk and couldn't handle your liquor. It's like, baby, she had one drink and went and got some water. She wasn't even drunk. And Junie, all she can say is, I don't remember drinking that much. And Simon's like, yeah, girl, you was messed up. Like, no, trust your gut. You know that bitch is lying. You didn't even have drinks like that. But anyway, they end up going shopping and like after they come out the mall it's to find somebody fucking up juni car and she like who are you like what the fuck are you doing and um siren is like oh that's just angela it's like bitch who the fuck is angela and why is she fucking up my car and it's like oh i'm sleeping with her husband like <sighs> and then angela like whoever she got to drive her there she jumps in the car and speeds off and says you know leave my husband alone but it's like, you saw, because she saw them come to the mall and waited for them to get out. So it's like, you see somebody else driving. So you know this ain't her fucking car. So why are you bashing this car? You know what that whole drive, you know where she stay at. Because you're like, you know she messing with your husband. So how you fucking up somebody else shit trying to get at her? That's stupid. But anyway, so... um Junie, no, not Junie, sorry. Siren tells her, oh, girl, you know, I got the money. I'm going to give you the money to help you pay to get your car fixed. It's like, help. No, whatever the damages are, you're going to pay for this. Or, you know, tell me her information so I can take her ass to court um, so I can make her pay for it. But I'm not putting no money towards this because this has nothing to do with me. I am a victim in this situation. So anyway, then we back to Siren and the dude Glizzy who says, you know, I need you to make up your mind so I can give you this money so I can get a green card. And because all she heard was $50,000 and the more he keeps saying it, she's like, you really going to give it to me? You know, like, what do I get out of the situation? You know, like, what does this mean? And he's like, we getting married solely for the purpose of me being able to stay here. And for some reason, this nigga tells her his plans that he's here to kill somebody. And um, it's a politician and his mother, which I'm just like, why would you tell her anything? Like, just tell her you want to stay in this country and you're trying to make some money. Like, I just want to stay here. I'm not trying to go back to my country. It's horrible over there, wherever he from, da, 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 whatever. Um, but she agrees and... He don't give her nothing. He like, girl, you stupid as fuck to think that I would give you any type of money not knowing anything about him, nothing whatsoever. So she gets played in that respect. And then she's still messing around with Finesse because Finesse called himself trying to get his wife back, which I don't understand. It's like, you love your wife so much. You wanted your wife, but this was the shit you was doing. You was constantly cheating on her. You didn't have no money. You weren't contributing to the household. That's what it was. You missed the lifestyle that she provided for you because the house was hers. Like all the money was hers. But it's like, if you knew that, then why wouldn't you do the right thing to hold on to this lifestyle? Like I never understand people who say that, like you have it so good and you get comfortable. You get real comfortable. And then when somebody have to remind you who the fuck they are, then it's, oh, I miss my family. Like, man, fuck y'all. Um, so in the end, Siren tells the whole story to, K- oh, um, what was it? Glizzy. Glizzy gave Siren 
$5,000 instead of the $50,000. And she calls the old boyfriend from the bodega, Kato, on the phone, telling him what the situation was. And next thing you know, he shows up at her house in all black with a gun to rob the five thousand dollars uh from her talking about i guess i'll be going on that fancy dinner by myself and she gets shot because he shot her and but then while she thinks she about to bleed out and die kato is shot and glizzy takes her and i was like i told your ass not to say nothing to nobody and um so they start messing around and she thinking they got something going and when she finds out that he's there to kill stats because stats while he is the quote-unquote boss of new york the nigga is also a politician running to be the uh what was it the senator and he got a racist ass uh because he's afro latina and then he has a racist ass mama who has something against blacks but you slept with a black man and created a half black baby and you know, Stax tells her this all the time, but basically it's like, you know, my mom, she's just going to be racist, but I love her. It's like, no, every time she says some shit, nip that shit in the bud, but it was always brought back like, well, it's true. You know, those people, I'm like, I don't want to read this shit, especially like by a black author. I'm like, come on now. We, we deal with that shit on a daily basis. What is this? Um, but in the end, let's see, because Jade ends up dying. Because uh, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. In part one, at the strip club, it was like one of the other strippers told her, like, I got a little mark coming through. Don't nobody mess with him. He for me. And, of course, everybody else respects that except for Siren. And when she had went out on the floor and caught the dude's eye, she went out and had sex with him, and I guess the money that was supposed to be for old girl, he gave to Siren. So old girl had a beef all this time, but in part two, she ended up getting hit by that same girl in the car, and the girl takes the money that she that Siren has stolen and told her, like, basically, bitch, I told you I was going to get you. So she dies out by being hit by a car. Um, Glizzy's dead uh finesse ends up dying basically everybody dead and the whole time during the book stacks kept acting uh junie he like you really don't remember me do you you do not remember me i can't believe you don't remember it's like nigga who the fuck are you then since you want her to remember so goddamn bad but it's not until his mama comes through the door with a gun pointed at her talking about ain't no way you gonna marry the bitch who killed your father he's like what what are you talking about but come to find out Junie's dad murdered his dad and um she had her dad killed you know as revenge and now she's there to kill her basically trying to blame it all on her like it's because of her father so that makes this her fault as to why your dad isn't here anymore and i'm going to kill her and she the mom shoots Junie like several times but of course she manages to survive and i believe what no they got married they had a baby and they lived happily ever after and the mom was arrested because she was like i can't believe you're gonna pick her over me and he's like yeah it's her over you every time because i'm not dealing with this shit and i told you that a long time ago this ain't her fault and you don't get to control my life and tell me what to do because at one point they had met up for dinner and she was like you know i got three uh three women lined up to meet you and he like no and because he was running you know for senator she's like you know it doesn't look good for you to be unattached he's like oh i'm very attached but to the woman of my choice and that's when the racist shit started and then he was also like how am I going to tell my mom that I want to be with a black woman? It's like very easy. You look that racist bitch in her face and say the woman of my dreams, the woman that I want to be with is a black woman. Cause it's like, how does she, how can she sit in your face? Cause you are also half black and she felt the way about her black husband. Dying. So it's like, you feel a little something, at least for these two black people. So 
I'm, I don't, d- d- uh, nah. and that's not to say that they can't be racist. I'm like, I know how racism works. It's still racism, but it was just like, what the fuck is going on here? But, and as much time as I spent talking about this, it ain't even going to take you that long to read it, in my opinion. So, um, but it was a good story. So, um, Ms. J. Jones, if you ever hear this, please know I'm not shitting on your work and I'm not trying to shit on you. It just could have, it could have used a little work and it was a good story, but this definitely could have been like one book altogether. But anyway, that's all I got. Um, peace and blessings, my beautiful people.